Hello, hobby friends, and welcome to today's episode of Hobby Talk. My name is David Baez, and in today's episode, we are going to dive into the world of PSA set registries. Today's guest has one of the most impressive PSA single-player set registries out there. And what makes it even more impressive is the fact that his registry is specifically an open product displaying his favorite player, Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg, on the front or back of numerous examples of an open material. Most recently, his unbelievably impressive collection received the highest honor in the hobby, receiving the 2020 award for best unopened pack set from PSA. With that being said, I'd like to welcome Aaron Minson to Hobby Talk. Aaron, what's going on, buddy? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, man, I'm really happy you, uh, you're joining us. And um, let, let's start right out of the gate, man. This is the question I ask everybody. How did you get into the hobby? What started it all for you? Uh, and don't spare any details. Tell, tell us how you sure. started. I guess uh, I started much like I expect other people started. You know, as a kid, uh, for me in the 80s and uh, early to mid 90s, just uh, buying packs, ripping and uh, building sets. And I had multiple albums of star players, major and minor stars of the day you know, and just pages of uh, Griffey and Ripken and Sandberg and Gwynn and, and whoever, you know, and that sustained me for a while. And uh, my parents fed into it and, you know, kind of encouraged that uh, insanity. And uh, they fed the lion. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. it really, uh, it, it all kind of carried through, you know, today, today for me. Yeah, so I so just judging by the names that you mentioned there, uh, I'm guessing in terms of the time period, you're looking at like the late '80s, um, you know, to early '90s. That's about right. Yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's right in my wheelhouse. So we both uh, dealt with some rough years of uh, spending more on the cards than they were actually worth for a while. <laughs> it was it wasn't all about that back in the day, you know. For for yeah. me, the hobby always fed my love for the game and vice versa and you know it was just this loving cycle you know that you know was a pleasure to be a part of and kept me going yeah yeah no that's that's so true and uh yeah do you put you meet some great people along the way too and uh and they um you know you share stories with them and, and what they're collecting and it almost inspires you right to kind of take that next step into your own collection oh yeah you know the i talk to a lot of people yeah these days especially you know with the advent of social media and stuff and bringing collectors together and you know there's a lot of commonalities of like people just trying to connect with something you know and it's often you know our childhood and our formative years and just kind of reaching back and keeping some of that fire alive and that's right very how I collect today yeah that's awesome so tell us a little bit about your transition into collecting unopened i'm super curious and i can uh, you know let me let me backpedal and say that you know i've i've seen aaron so much on the uh forums and thread facebook um specifically and just seen some amazing stuff that he keeps on posting from all eras all years and it's just really 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 cool so i've always been curious the million dollar question the transition into unopened and specifically ryan sandberg unopened material how did that all start yeah i mean it's you know, for, for any collector, I think it's a continuing evolution, you know, and um, I had set aside the hobby for a bit when I was in high school and in about my mid twenties, I started to feel that fire again. So I started to get back into collecting, but then, you know, being an adult, you have priorities, you know, that kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that. so, you know, you have to, I think set boundaries for yourself if you're going to do a deep dive in this hobby and really, you know, trying to find that balance resulted in, you know, a, a really niche deep dive for me and to the point where, you know, you've probably gathered from the, the Facebook groups and stuff that I'm, you know, something of like a, a cerebral or like even borderline like spiritual like collector, you know, yeah. and so I... You know, I, I went to a, I went through a point where I was doing some pretty extensive soul searching. Like, if I'm going to do this, you know, what is really going to fulfill me? You know, and for me, the answer was going back to, you know, my childhood. Like, what, you know, now that I am an adult of more means than I was certainly when I was a kid. You know, like, what do I want to grab that 
I would have loved to have when I was a kid. And for me, you know, it became a no brainer that I wanted to deep dig back into my Cubs fandom, you know, growing up and Ryan Sandberg was always my favorite player. So, you know, I really, I really wanted to kind of go on that, in that route, you know, it's something you picked, you picked a hell of a player. Yeah. You know, my, my dad as a Cubs fan had always encouraged me along those lines when I was a kid. So that was something that I was able to pick up again, pretty quickly. And uh, I started doing a, you know, a deep dive into the Ryan Sandberg uh, PSA master set, you know, just kind of indiscriminately grabbing whatever bargain PSA slab that I could just to kind of fill that set. Kind of ignite the fire, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it becomes like, so it becomes when you start going after like a PSA master set like that, something so extensive, it becomes daunting after a little while. It's like, okay, eventually, like I got to a point again, as I have a bunch of different times over the years of like, what am I doing here? You know, I've got, I've got to balance this out with the rest of my life. Like, (laughs) what am I doing going after, you know, this couple hundred card set, you know, and I'm like, am I really enjoying this? Am I enjoying every piece that I encounter? Yeah. You know, that, that, that's one of the challenges, right, Aaron, that you, you know, like when you get, you know, for me, it was, it was uh, Roberto Clemente, which was, unfortunately, I picked a very pricey uh, set registry. And, uh, one of the biggest frustrations I had was kind of juggling the whole uh, budget piece of it. Like, you know, what PSA grade should I go for certain cards for certain years? And um, in in your world, I think maybe, okay, the prices weren't as much, but the amount of product to get to that registry, because I only had really tops with rare exception of maybe 63 Fleer and other, you know, other oddball. But I mean, in, in the Sandberg era, you had like, a ton of variations so i imagine the challenge of getting them all and some of them more pricier than others right that, that was a big deal right you know i was i always approach this thing from like a psa 9 budget you know so i was able to cover a lot of ground pretty quickly you know and that's smart move <laughs> yeah yeah it all, it all started to kind of churn back a lot yeah. of memories for me and and you know but you know i was starting to have a bit of a PC identity crisis, you know, after accumulating so much that I was kind of wishy-washy about. And then, uh, you know, I started to encounter uh, a select number of PSA graded packs. You know, these were mostly for Ryan Sandberg rookie packs. Right. 83 Fleer was a pretty common one. And then uh, even some 83 tops kind of snuck their way in there. And then, you know, that's something that I found really intriguing You know, like for, for me, like these unopened packs told a story, you know, that these, that these things remained unopened for multiple decades, even with a very conspicuous star on top. And, you know, that's something that I found really intriguing and appealing. Yeah. Aaron, you hit the nail on the head. I think, um, I, I, I just did an interview uh, with Calvin Arnold from uh, Robert Edward Auctions, and we were talking about that exact point, you know, about how these unopened packs, you know, are just pieces of history and how they're just like, there's, there's, there's this awesome story more often than not behind these packs. And if not, I like to sometimes imagine the story behind the, behind the pack or kind of like feel like, Hey, what, what, what was a kid in 1983 feeling like when they, you know, went to that candy store and saw the pack just sitting there with their idol, just kind of going through the wrapper and, and you know, buying it and just ripping it open and putting yeah, it into and then, their binders. Yeah, like for right? that kid to resist the temptation to rip open that pack, like that's another story or tangent within itself. And really, like you were saying, this your mind can run rampant with the possibilities as it relates to unopened. You know, like why yeah. this? You know what? what did this pack go through to remain in factory original unopened condition for so long? And, you know, the possibilities range from people being so disciplined that they just appreciate it for what it was, or maybe it went, you know, unnoticed in somebody's closets for so many years, or, you know, they sitting in a, in a case just untouched during a time where the hobby was going bananas, you know, I really like to, you know, mentally rusty. and somehow it made its way to the back of your, uh, your wall there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. They found their way home eventually. And you know, these, these things find their way home, you know, with all of us at 
at some point. Well said. So um, let me ask you in terms of the time that it took you to put your your current um, set together, uh, how many, I'm, I'm, I have to assume it's years. So how many years has it taken so far? You know, I, th I think I'm up on about three years, you know, of, okay. uh, you know, getting that's to... really impressive, Aaron. Three, I, I really pegged it for more, so that's pretty sure, impressive. I, mean, I, I think you know, I've been pretty incessant in the in the Facebook groups, and I've been shamelessly plugging my needs and <laughs> yeah. what I'm looking for, and that's kind of you know, that's that's helped a lot, you know, like people, yeah. you know, that repetition of me being in people's ears constantly has, yeah, you know, a lot of people looking out for me, and like the. You know, I've I've been able to cover a lot of ground really quickly, and I think that's a testament to, you know, it, it takes a village. Yeah, you know, we joked around quite a bit on the forums with, with you and uh, your request for Sandberg, but I totally admire the way you've handled that. And I think I uh, correct me, if I, I think I had a um, eighty-seven that I uh, got into your hands eventually, a PSA nine, I think a Donruss, right? That me and you, oh, yeah, me, yeah. you the deal out a while back, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just happy I was able to contribute to the call. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you know, awesome. I, 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 um, appreciate, I appreciate getting packs that I needed as much as I appreciate people who present packs to me that I don't need. You know, the fact that everybody has been, you know, keeping their eyes out for this stuff yeah. and, and, you know, flooding my inbox, you know, it's yeah. it's all appreciated. Yeah, man, that's one one of the great things about. I mean, look, it's it's not just in our hobby, but I feel like having having delved into different hobbies through uh, the 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 time I've been in this, um, unopened, especially, I, I feel in unopened, we we've we've become like this little kind of cult community where we kind of take care of each other as best we can. So if uh, even if somebody wants to add. You know, um, let's say, you know, Mike, uh, you know, Mike, Mike Cernzioni, he's a big Seaver guy. And I might have a pack that I really like that has Seaver on it. But just because I know he likes it that much more, there's a good chance I'm going to give him a ring and say, you know, shoot him a message and say, hey, Mike, you know, I have this, you know, do you need it? And and I imagine the same with you in the Sandberg collection. Uh, I know if I get any, I'm going to be calling you for sure. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Um, so. Of the current, let me ask you this: In the current items, you know that you have in your registry. What was the most difficult item to obtain currently, and why? Out of what I currently have. Yeah, out of you know what? What's the story behind the hardest piece that you that that you know that for you in terms of finding and putting or or just submitting? Like we were just talking about, I've I've been very lucky in that the pieces that should be very difficult for me to acquire. I've had people looking out for me and they've in turn found these really difficult pieces, particularly um, like early to mid eighties wax with Sandbrook showing, you know, these that's are, hard. Yeah. These, these are difficult products to come by increasingly and yeah. you know, even, even more difficult to determine what players are showing, you know, and, and people like Kurt have been huge and given me a leg up and, you know, finding like, um, 83 Fleer wax, you know, is a pretty critical component of the of the run here. But yeah, that bad boy right there. Nice. <laughs> a little bit of a glare. Right I love there. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that there is a Kurt special right there, and he's uh, he's been keeping an eye out for me. So I've been I've been really lucky in that, like the really difficult pieces that I've gotten, I've come by relatively easily yeah that's and, awesome and, and and some of those wax packs in particular are especially hard, hard you know to to see the player on the front or the back yeah. um so i imagine you know so you know that was a challenge in and of itself is not only you know um kind of sifting you know finding a sandberg but to try to like identify the sandberg is uh can be a daunting with certain issues anyway can be a daunting task oh yeah especially in a lot of cases with those tougher packs you're just you're looking up you know you're comparing just a single line of text that can be seen through the wax it's often like a stat line on the back of a card to you know a screenshot of the, the cards that you're looking for and that's really like all it takes and 
you know, I think that's kind of where. Yeah, I've, I've done my fair share of that, where I'm like literally on the baseball stats website and I'm looking up who had 28 home runs in 85 or something. And, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. So, no, that's that's really cool. Um, so, so moving on to what you don't have, Aaron, what's the one item that you still haven't been able to find that's kind of like ranked high on your personal list? Uh, and, and it's just really been difficult for you to get. Yeah, I mean, this will be no secret to those watching from the Vintage Wax and Pax group, but the 85 Fleer Cello with Ryan Sandberg on top has kind of been the white whale. It's been, for whatever reason, a really elusive pack for me. And uh, it's kind of an, a really irritating one because I've, <laughs> I've almost gotten every single pack from Fleer between 1983 and 1993, including Wax and Cellos. And uh, that 85 Fleer is kind of the, the thorn, the thorn in your side, right? <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned that. I do have some 85 Fleer cellos, so I'll start hunting around and uh, I'll definitely keep you in mind if I find one. Yeah, that would be that would be huge. Yeah, and we're going to have to have like a future episode where we like showcase it. <laughs> oh, man. That would be great. <laughs> that would be cool. Yep. Yeah, so... So um, let me ask you this. I, I've, I've been asking, you know, the folks in previous interviews, and, and I just always like to hear varying opinions on this. Um, it's a rather broad question, but what's your take on the, on the current hobby, you know, cards and unopened? And, and I guess the asterisk here is the COVID era, right? And, and, and yeah. you know, how it's impacted the hobby. What, what's your opinion on everything you've been seeing? Uh, I've been trying to take a pretty inclusive stance to that you know a lot of people are finding themselves with uh time on their hands and uh you know sports have been either like totally lacking or otherwise like conspicuously different than in previous years and people are just looking for connections so i'm inclined to think that people are approaching this hobby from a good place you know like people are coming into the fore and just you know, they're, they're wanting to connect with something, you know, whether it's due to the absence of sports or they just need a little bit more of connection, you know, to the game, whatever game that might be for them, you know, so, you know, they're, they're coming into this from a good place and I can certainly understand and respect that. Um, you know, this, the, the enthusiasm and all the buying that's been generated because of that has really flooded the market, obviously. Right. It, it's been frustrating from, you know, the standpoint of somebody who who is a regular and eager buyer of product. Of know. 85 cellos, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, mean, before, I, had, I had to, I had to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before, before COVID, like, even then, like, those products were in a price range that was, like, you know, just kind of barely out of my reach but now that's kind of been blown out of the water you know like i'm i'm very much on a budget and uh you know i've 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 largely just kind of abstained from buying much of anything just to wait for all this kind of sort out and, and sort itself out and determine what prices are the new normal what's you know what's being hyped up a lot now but is due for a correction and uh, all of that kind of has me a spectator in all of this in a way. And, uh, you know, like, but, but yeah. at the same time, like, I, I'm not focusing. Like in the stock, like in the stock market, you buy on the dips, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's kind of yeah. been interesting to watch though, even from a spectator standpoint, like it can't always be about me and what I want and what I want to buy and for what price, you know, like there's, there's enthusiasm being generated around, uh, you know, junk era and vintage unopened. And I think that's, that's a great thing. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to, to watch that play out and, you know, watch people get excited, even if that means I kind of got to step back a little bit and find my place in it again. Yeah. I, I'm going to reference uh, your, your post from um, a couple weeks ago now when uh, you kind of uh, broke the news to all of us about that uh, great award you received. And I mean, you hit the nail on the head regarding like the, the visibility that, that, that you winning this, this, this high honor, you know, gives to the hobby, you know, in terms of, you know, not kind of putting, you know, let, let, let's say put it to this, you know, a lot of people put junk era to the side and they realize, no, there's a lot of value there. And it's, it's, 
and add that to what the current market is now on 80s material um that even more so but it's 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 just awesome that the junk era is finally getting to do recognition because there's some really solid cards in in that era right i it, it really didn't take me long as i was started going after all the sandberg packs to realize that you know like if, if you go on to a deep dive of a player collection like that, collecting packs with your, your preferred player showing, you know, you start to find value in products that were otherwise scorned, you know, like 91 Fleer. You know, I was, don't get me wrong, when I found my last Sandberg pack from that product, I was happy to be done with it. But there was a time where, like, <laughs> I, there was a time where I lived and breathed 91 Fleer. You know, it's like there, Sandberg has... <laughs> <laughs> Sandberg has three variations in that set and you know I just went on a tear buying 91 Fleer until I found all three of them you know and I could imagine the hobby shop that you're buying it from saying hey we finally found the buyer <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. No, but that's uh, joking aside. It's really cool uh, uh, to see, you know, because even outside of the outside of your collection, outside of Sandberg, like, let's use your example, 91 Fleer. I mean, it, it's just like a lot of the era, it, the, pr the prices of the unopened material, as well as the key players, you know, in, in a, you know, PSA nine or 10, it's gone up, you know, it's, 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 it's continuing from a percentage increase standpoint in a short term. It's a pretty impressive number if you look at it from that angle. I mean, it could be, of course, like an $8 to $12, but the fact is that it's growing and it's growing rather quickly. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's no question that, you know, the the enthusiasm being generated in junk air product, you know, means more value, you know. But um, for, for me, like this collection endeavor really transcended monetary value and, you know, led to a you know, an, an unconditional appreciation of the product themselves, you know, and it's like, it, it went from, it pretty quickly went from just a strictly Sandberg pack to collection, collection to like a curation of junk era products, you know, that were, that were right there and ready and available to me during my formative years of collecting, you know, and, and from that perspective, you know, it doesn't matter if, other people think this is like scorned product or garbage or whatever, you know, to me, it's like just each one of these products is a bigger, is a piece of a bigger puzzle. And, you know, in that way, a lot of them had equal value to me, you know, beyond the monetary. Well, well said, Aaron. I love it. And it's uh, so true. Um, you know, so I wanted to end today's, uh, conversation with what i've been doing for every interview um and it's kind of asked two fun questions a little bit outside the box here um so i'll fire away the first one is and i, I already kind of like i'm giggling because i can only imagine how difficult this one might be but if you had to give up your entire awesome award-winning psa set registry collection except for one item which one would it be and why yeah, I mean, um, for, for me, that one item that I would keep no matter what, like, goes beyond the set registry. It goes beyond, like, the depth of the collection. And for me, it's this one that I made myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought that was a Photoshop because I saw that oh. once in one of your posts. You know, it, it, it started as a Photoshop initially. Um, the the late great Mike Buccella from the groups. Oh he, uh, yeah, he created this, and I suspect he was ribbing me a little bit when he created the Photoshop image of this. But God help me, like I just fell in love with the image. You know, like I knew obviously it was like theoretically impossible to have this kind of sequency happen here, but I just you know <laughs> being a being a Sandberg pack guy, I saw all three of them, you know, in an 83 tops yeah. rack pack, and I just fell in love with the image. And uh, when he passed is really what prompted me to to create this rack myself. You know, and I, I approached the uh, Vintage Wax and Packs group, telling them what I wanted to do. And, and I wasn't even really surprised that 
people chipped in everything that you see here um, free of charge. It That's awesome. All, everything was contributed, you know, to the cause to create this memorial rack pack. And, uh, you know, to me, that's a testament to, you know, the kind of community that is developed in the unopened hobby. And uh, in addition, this this Ryan Sandberg rookie card is actually the one that my dad got me for my ninth birthday. Wow. So, so yeah, that kind of adds another layer of uh, yeah for me. So Aaron, that's a that's an amazing piece. And it goes back to everything that we were talking about and that it's been mentioned in previous interviews as well about the, the, the story behind, you know, the collections being, uh, you know, just as, or if not more important, right. than the actual card itself, it's the story. And that story to me is, is amazing. And I could see why that was an easy pick for you. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, it's a, it's, it's totally a story of, community and friendship and like approaching the hobby for what it is which is like something pure at its core yeah. my last question for you and i think i know the answer to this already is outside of the world of 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 baseball cards and unopened um what's the hobby that you're most interested in and why man i think i think i would probably do a deep ish dive into like action figure collection from like the 80s and 90s because i think for me that really goes, yeah i think that for for me that goes back into like the whole connection to your youth aspect of things where like i would probably dig back into like the the he-man master of the universe stuff and like thundercats era through like especially <laughs> especially like the teenage mutant ninja turtles era and into like jurassic park and uh batman you know, of the early nineties and very cool. And All right. In some All right. There. And uh, yeah, that's a rabbit hole that I have not even walked up to the precipice of yet, but uh, you know, I think. So that's... if I do an episode of hobby talk, Aaron, and I bring on some, you know, avid collector of action figures, you're going to be watching. I'm a viewer, buddy. <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah. That's a great answer. You really t uh, caught me off guard. I honestly thought you were going to peg it to something with, with music, and I didn't want to give up too much there. But, yeah, you know, I, oh, yeah. obviously I know that, that you're involved with music. So, um, yeah, but that's I love the answer. That's great. Yeah, with uh, with music, you know, obviously I'm, I'm an avid fan of music, and I play a lot. And, uh, you know, that's something that kind of – that's something that comes from me, like, more – easily and seamlessly to where I don't really have to work at it. But when you, when you, you know, approach something from the hobby aspect of things, you know, you have to network with people, you have to talk and you have to find the product. And, you know, that chase is, you know, what I find really appealing about whatever the hobby might be. Yeah. Well said. So uh, on that note, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll end things, Aaron. I can't thank you enough for uh, your time today. And I hope um, you, you, uh, you come back for a future episode. And uh, this was, this was awesome. Thanks again. Appreciate the time. Thank you, buddy. I'd be happy to come back and I really look forward to watching, you know, what else you do with this program and, you know, you, you've got a fan, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks again, bud. All right, man. For watching today's episode guys before you go real quick if you could click that like button and that subscribe button for me i will greatly appreciate it guys it's just going to help grow the hobby networking group and i promise i'm going to keep on bringing that awesome content your way i'll be watching those comments let me know what you guys want and i will do my best to deliver guys thank you so much very humble for your time very appreciative Go on hobbynetworkgroup.com. You'll see we're on Twitter. We are on Instagram. Very soon on Facebook as well as uh, podcasts to come super soon. Um, and I'll share those links on the website. Thanks again, guys. And have a great day. Take care.